Hey Booktube, here's my review of the Fifth Wave series by Rick Yancey. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks and I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the Fifth Wave series by Rick Yancey. It's a series of three books. It's YA, and it is The Fifth Wave, The Infinite Sea, and The Last Star. On audio, these are narrated by, for The Fifth Wave, Phoebe Stroll and Brandon Espinoza. And then for The Infinite Sea and The Last Star, it's Phoebe Stroll and Ben Yannetti. I cannot rave enough about this narration. It was so, 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 so good. I am so impressed with these voice actors, the way that they were able to just embody these characters. A lot of times uh, narration is, is just good overall in creating a mood or you know, immersing you in the world, um, giving you a sense that you're right there. But these actors did stuff with the characters. You, I just, I felt like I was listening to the character talk to me or like I was inside the head of one of the characters. I mean, they were just that good. The way that I would read something on the page, because I do have the print books, I could read something on the page and then I could hear them say it. And it was like, whoa, what a difference. And what a way for them to bring it to life, you know, to, and when they do that, when they bring it to life and give it expression and emotion and all that, they, embody the character. That character is a person rather than a character who's talking, you know. It was just really, really good. And I'll give you some examples as I go along. Uh, I want to talk about each book and the series as a whole, and I want to talk about characters. So as I talk about those, I'll give you some examples. This is all about an alien invasion, and it happens in five stages or waves. The first wave is called Lights Out, and that's just an EMP is set off by the aliens and it knocks out all the power in the whole everywhere. The second wave is called Surf's Up, and that was a tsunami which wiped out all of the coasts and islands everywhere. Huge tsunamis, uh, lots of people died. The third wave is Pestilence, and for that one, the aliens put a virus into the avian population. So it's like the bird flu, except it's like Ebola. So unless you had a natural immunity to this disease, you died. The fourth wave is silencers. And silencers are aliens who have woken up inside a human body and they go out and they're snipers. They shoot humans wherever they see them. They patrol a given area. So that's the fourth wave. Now the fifth wave is about to roll out as the book starts, as the first book starts. And it, nobody knows exactly what it is, but it's going to decimate humanity off the face of the planet. There are two main characters in this story and they are Cassie Sullivan and Ben Parrish. Cassie and Ben went to the same high school, but uh, while Ben was Cassie's crush, basically, Ben really didn't know that she was even alive. Ben was kind of the really popular kid, star of the football team, valedictorian, I mean, all of that. He had all that going on, so she really wasn't on his radar. And then Cassie is 16, and she's kind of shy and withdrawn and doesn't like to make waves or call attention to herself. My plastic baggie stuffed with pictures. Dad. Mom. My little brother, Sammy. One of Ben, you were some kind of serious, gorgeous parish, clipped from my yearbook, because Ben was my future boyfriend and or maybe future husband. Not that he knew it. He barely knew I existed. I knew some of the same people he knew, but I was a girl in the background. Several degrees of separation removed. Well, when we first meet Cassie, she is writing in her journal, and she's on the run. She's been separated from her dad and her little brother in a refugee camp. Her little brother has been taken by the military to a safe location, which turns out to be Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. And uh, so she's on her way to go get him or join him. And so she's on the run, and she has to dodge the, the snipers, the silencers, um, and she has to stay alive, essentially. 
she's dealing with a lot of uh, grief and, you know, feeling like she's the last person on the face of the planet and uh, trying to process everything that has happened to her. Her whole world has fallen down around her and all of her people are gone. That sounds crazy. Am I crazy? Have I lost my mind? You can only call someone crazy if there's someone else who's normal, like good and evil. If everything was good, then nothing would be good. Whoa. That sounds, well, crazy. Crazy. The new normal. So she deals with it with a lot of humor and a lot of sarcasm. And so it's she's a real fun character to get to know because of that. Two spiral-bound notebooks, college ruled, one with a purple cover, the other red. My favorite colors, plus they're my journals. It's part of the hope thing. But if I am the last and there's no one left to read them, maybe an alien will, and they'll know exactly what I think of them. In case you're an alien and you're reading this, bite me. Her observations about the things around her are, you know, kind of like smart-ass remarks. Aliens are stupid. I'm not talking about real aliens. The others aren't stupid. No, I'm talking about the aliens inside our own heads. You know, the aliens we imagine. The kind of aliens we'd like to attack us, human aliens. There's no way to know for sure, but I bet the others knew about the human aliens we'd imagined. And I bet they thought it was funny as hell. They must have laughed their asses off. If they have a sense of humor. Or asses. And when we meet her, she has changed dramatically from this shy girl into a survivor. Ben Parrish barely survives the disease that goes around, but he does survive and he becomes a soldier. When we meet him, he has just recovered. He is at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and he is about to go through basic training. In basic, he has a nom de guerre and that is zombie. And he is called that because, first of all, he survived the plague, and second of all, because he has lost his entire family. And so he has closed himself off emotionally from everything and everyone. So he's kind of like The Walking Dead. There is a place I go, a center of complete stillness that isn't touched by fatigue or hopelessness or anger or anything brought on by the coming of the big green eye in the sky. In that place, I have no name. I'm not Ben or zombie. I just am. I give her my best smile. Before the alien Armageddon happened, I was known for my smile. Not bragging too much, but I had to be careful never to smile while I drove. It had the capacity to blind oncoming traffic, but it has absolutely no effect on Ringer. She doesn't squint in its overwhelming luminescence. She doesn't even blink. Speaking of smiles, I've yet to see so much as a thin-lipped grin from her. I decide to make it my mission to coax one out of her. Her mouth twitches. Oh, I'm so close. So basically the story in the first book is essentially Cassie trying to find her little brother Sam, and then uh, in the end meeting up with Ben and uh, trying to defeat the aliens. So it's a really great adventure, kind of a road trip story with Cassie, but then it's also a lot of psychological stuff with Ben. And the thing I really liked about this story was that it felt very fresh. It's not. It's a story that's been told before, but it's the way it's told and the way it's written that really make it interesting and hard to put down. It moves really quickly and it creates really endearing characters that you care about and you want to keep coming back to. With The Infinite Sea, there are additional characters added, and while they're peripheral characters, uh, secondary characters, they still do figure very prominently, and we get a lot more points of view. And the book spends a lot of time uh, giving you backstory with Cassie's little brother Sam, and then a couple of the other characters Evan Walker and Marika, who's also known as Ringer. And there's a lot of psychological warfare going on in these books that really gets explored in The Infinite Sea. And what I really loved about it was that it asked so many really deep questions. Things like, what makes us human? What constitutes humanity? 
And who are we at our very base levels? Are we really horrible? And is survival our base instinct? Or are, do we have um, a good moral code that we follow? And what have we done to the planet? And have we taken good care of things? And how do we treat each other? And all of these things, what bearing do they have on why the aliens have come? Why are there aliens? What are they doing here? Where did they come from? What do they want? Why do they seem to want to eradicate humanity from the planet? It asks all these questions. And then beyond that, when you get into the psychological warfare, you get a lot more questions about reality. And by the end of that book, I didn't just want all those questions answered, but I was even questioning if there even were aliens <laughs> who had taken over. I mean, because I got to the point where I thought, maybe there aren't aliens, maybe it's it's uh, humans who have... Uh, are destroying the earth and kind of make kind of reboot everything and maybe there are no aliens they've just disguised themselves as aliens so I had a lot of questions at the end of that book but I was really looking forward to the third book because I thought it would answer all of them also in the infinite sea you have a lot of action going on and you have more of everybody trying to uh, defeat the aliens essentially in the last star the third book you have the ending, the big climax to the whole story with the confrontation between the humans and the aliens. And I thought it was going to answer all of the questions that I was left with at the end of The Infinite Sea. And I, while it was a great story, it really didn't answer those questions. And I think in some stories that's okay because it's part of the story that you never really know some things. But I, there were a lot of things that I thought we needed to know, questions we needed to have answered in The Last Star that weren't. There's a lot more character development, and we see where Cassie and Ben have really grown throughout the series. And I closed the door and turned to Dumbo. Grab your gear, we're moving out. Dumbo's eyes go wide. Just me and you, Sarge? I know what he's worried about. I'm good, Bo. Touching the spot where Ringer placed the bullet. Not 100%, more like 86.5, but good enough. Pain knifes into my side when I reached up to pull my rucksack from the closet shelf. Okay, take off a point and a half, make it 85. Still closer to 100, then to zero. Of course, the culmination happens, and like I say, the big showdown between the aliens and the humans. There's a lot of things getting blown up, and alliances are made, and people that you thought were really bad people are maybe not so bad, and caught in a bad situation. And a lot more of the psychological warfare is explored, but uh, in the end, none of those questions really get answered. I think a lot of times authors in the last book of a series will go a direction sometimes that we don't expect them to go, or they go a direction which seems appropriate, and for a lot of people it's a very satisfying ending. It's a really great ending. It's like, oh, well, you know, it couldn't have ended any other way. And for me, I got to the end and I thought, what? Are you kidding me? Because the further I get from that story, the matter I am about it. I feel like Rick Yancey had such an opportunity there to do something really creative and inventive with the story. And he just copped out. He just went for the Hollywood ending. He did a lot of cliche sorts of things that writers do in resolving the conflict in a plot. And I just, mm -mm, I just didn't like it. It really disappointed me. So the series overall as a whole, I would give five stars to. And to be honest, if I didn't want to own the whole series, I wouldn't even have bought this book. I, I, I was that disappointed. So it still is a good story. And even though I didn't like the ending, I think that I'm glad I read it. And the narration was just fabulous. So those are my thoughts. If you've read the whole series or any of the books in the series, I would love to hear your thoughts, especially if you really liked The Last Wave. I would love to hear why you liked it and compare that with why I didn't. And maybe I need to give it a little more of a break. I kind of don't think so, but maybe I do. So let's talk about all that in comments. And that's it for now from me. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.